Okay. Let me continue this thought. Books provide pathways to places beyond the confines of one's life. Fortunately, writers like Debbie Gonzalez, Judith Falloon Reed, Kaylin Barron help young people through their journey. And of course, Kathy Sikursky, our moderator, a very adept educator, will help us understand. Thank you, ladies. Hi, hi everyone. Um, uh, my name is Kathy Sikursky and I'm here today at the 22nd annual Harlem Book Fair. I'm excited to talk about children's book writing with three very accomplished children's authors. They are Debbie Gonzalez, author of A Walk with Cooper and A Game with Cooper, Judith Fallon Reed, author of Antarctica Adventures with a Jamaican and Ice, and Kaylin Byron, author of Cinderella is Dead. Authors, thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you. Okay, writing for children requires a deep empathetic listening. Debbie, do you agree with this and how does it show up in your work? Hmm. I, I do agree. I mean, my inspiration for writing came from doing read alouds to the kids, particularly in, in Harlem. So I feel really connected to being on today. So thank you. Uh, the, it shows up in my story um, because I'm a licensed social worker. And so I came across children often in vulnerable times and critical times. And I wanted to be uh, an opportunity for them to have this story that they're more than what their crises are. And I wanted my book to be just a fun story that at the end you felt uh, kind of just the love of, of my fur baby Cooper and his human mom. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, um, Judith, how might it show up in your work? Well, I th first of all, thanks for the Harlem Book Fair. I, it's my favorite book fair, and I, I'm sorry that I'm not there burning in the sun this year, but um, <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I actually started writing for kids when my kids, which are now grown adults, were very small. And I found that a lot of the stories that you would read, they were great stories, but there were just not enough of them. And I found that some of the stories didn't quite challenge the children to, to think. You know, they were written for a certain age, but I found that my kids and other kids like my children, you know, they read them and that was it. But I, so I started writing children's material to challenge children. And so even my current book is, it's about challenging you to think beyond just where we normally think children should think. <laughs> Try and expand them because I find that kids are, they're brighter than we think they are. I think you all do that, but great. Thank you for that. Uh, and Kaylin, um, you write for an older demographic. Is empathy important to reach your audience? Um, it is. And, um, you know, I started writing YA because just, um, you know, as a, as a reader, as a young reader, um, I didn't really see myself in a lot of the, the YA fantasy that I was reading. Um, and I just wanted to, I wanted to give kids another, another option um, to let them know that they could be the heroes of a YA fantasy. Um, Cinderella is dead kind of uh, focuses on a on a queer black protagonist, and um, I just didn't see that. Um, and so my my motivation was really just to kind of give kids another option. Yes, thank you for that. And I have one more question for you. Uh, you write you each write for a different age group. What challenges are specific to your readers? Uh, and we'll start with Kaylin since she writes for the older children. Uh, I think that that you know when you're a teen you're kind of figuring out who you are and what you stand for and and kind of where you fit in and um so I think that the the challenge is, is that that is a very unique experience for each of us we're all you know we all have different life experiences and we're trying to you know we're just trying to figure it out when you're 15 16 17 that's a tough you know that can be a tough um, age. And so um, I think it's really just about um, finding, f 
finding a kind of centralized story. I think we can all relate to someone who wants, you know, the best for themselves, for their family, for their community. Um, and so, um, you know, I think we just, we need more stories. We just need all kinds of different experiences so that when you're a teen and you go to the YA section, you can find something that, that fits you. Um, so it's, I think it's just about giving, giving as many choices as possible. Thanks. And that, I think, Judith, that goes back to what you were saying, providing books and uh, that are fit for your audience. So uh, can you tell us how, what challenges are specific to your readers since you write for a younger uh, age group? The challenge, the challenge that is specific to my readers is being able to write within that age group something that different levels of intelligence, different levels of aptitude, different um, levels of, of thinking can actually enjoy. And so what I did and what I've done in my children's work is always to make it so that the children can read, but there's also always stuff that they need an adult to help them with as well, to kind of bring in different levels. So older, or, or, or an older sibling. So older siblings can also be attracted to reading the material because there's stuff in there that they have to help their younger siblings with. So that's kind of my challenge, is finding a voice that's somewhere in that middle where different levels can, can understand and read and enjoy. Great, thank you. Uh, and how about you, Debbie? I think it's true for, you know, for the younger age group, particularly with picture books, you want to have language that's going to entertain the adults um, because they're the ones that are going to help the kids buy the book. Uh, and to have language that I, because my books are geared for early readers, I want them to be able to feel a certain confidence as they're reading it and then challenge them with a, a, a couple of vocabulary words that they might not have been introduced to before and that that's okay. Um, and being able to even just uh, in a, with a game with Cooper, just kind of the theme of the story became uh, this idea of how do you uh, build confidence when you're successful with things. And, and that's what I try to, to create with the language of the book. Something that's challenging, as Judith said, but not so challenging that they don't feel confident and then they put the book down, um, but that they would en enjoy the story as well. So they sometimes, you know, they don't realize that they're necessarily reading because they're just enjoying the story. Good point. Good point. Um, Judith, uh, what's the most important advice you could offer new writers on this panel? Wow. Most important That's advice. Loaded one. <laughs> Very loaded. <laughs> I, would say, I would have to say, go hang out with some kids. Listen to them. Mm -hmm. Don't write what you think they want. Mm -hmm. Write what they want. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes as adults, we, one, we forget we were once children. Two, we also think we know exactly what's best for them and what they want and what works for them, which is why I like what um, Kellen said, which is, you know, writing in that group of people who people don't think about writing for. Mm -hmm. So my advice is to go hang out with some kids, hear what they're talking about, hear what they're interested in, because I found out they were interested in the environment <laughs> mm -hmm. when I wrote my book. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a lot of ideas on becoming a better writer, I guess. That's what you're saying. Yes. Um, how about you, Kaylin? Um, can you tell us uh, what I you agree. Mean? I agree uh, with Judith. Um, it, um, it's, really, it's really about listening. You know, if, you are, if we're writing these stories where, you know, we, we're hoping to maybe affect some kind of change in either in the real world or in our imagined world, it makes sense that we would listen and elevate the voices of the most vulnerable. So we have to listen and we have to, um, and really, you know, actively listen. Um, and I was a preschool teacher for 10 years. And so the kids, guys, kids, when you go and you talk to them, interacting with them, what they want is not the same thing that you want. So you have to listen to them what they want. They, they've got their mind. So yeah, um, listen, to the, listen to the babies because they know. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Jude Debbie? 
Be, yeah, I, I agree. The babies always have such great insights, um, which cracks me up. Um, you know, I had a five-year-old ask about the continuity of the bunny in my first book. Like, where did the bunny go? And I loved it. Um, and I, I have a number of nieces, great nieces and nephews at this point in my, you know, focus group, you know, my age group. And so I let them read the story and they'll come up with, you know, the, the insight. So, hmm, I like that. But, you know, Aditi, I don't know about the dog talking, right? I'm like, ah, it's it's not, you know, it's a fictional book. Um, but the kids are great. And I think that I agree that being able to have a relationship, because I think oftentimes for children's books, you do get authors that are writing for what they think the kids want um, and and don't really have a relationship with children. And, and that's what I enjoy most. I'm missing getting out there for read aloud in person. Um, because the feedback from the kids, their comments, they, they just, it's wonderful. I, that's great. All your messages are listened to the kids, and I, that's great. Um, Debbie, um, what new passion projects are you working on currently, or new books? Ooh. The, um, my next book that's been under production, um, and so I get a little emotional, so it's the, I have the series, and so the, the, the next one is about Cooper and my mom. Um, and so I had started writing it uh, some months ago and had a chance to read her some of the scenes. And uh, I wanted to be, one of the things that I found as I wrote the other books uh, was the, you know, I'm a Latina and I didn't really think about that and how that's then shown up. Talk about, you know, seeing yourself in the book. I'm a character in the book. And so I wanted to be much more intentional, bringing that flavor out and having some bilingual elements um, because being around my mom, we we're talking Spanish English all the time. Uh, but then she just, she just recently passed. So it has given me a little bit of a pause. Um, it's definitely, so it's become even more passionate. Uh, so it's definitely gonna come. Uh, but yeah, so it's, the, it's kind of that aspect. I think what I've learned along the way uh, is really that idea of, what I represent. And, you know, when I write my books now, I write them about what my life is now living, you know, in the suburbs. And I forget that what I represent is a young girl who grew up um, in the similar situation as the kids that I served. And so I get to serve as an example. Thank you so much for that. Um, Kaylin, um, what passion projects are you currently working on? Um, I just, uh, Debbie, that just, you got me over here emotional too. So my heart goes out to you. And um, uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm working on a few different things. I have um, another YA out next year um, that's kind of a contemporary fantasy, but um, I've also been working on some picture books. Um, and uh, because I want... Um, just like I think we've all kind of expressed this in one way or another, um, more stories, more representation, more different, more different kinds of views, and and um, so I'm I'm working on some picture books, and um, and I also have a middle grade that I'm working on. I'm kind of all over the place, so I just I really just enjoy stories, you know, highlighting um, kids who maybe haven't seen themselves reflected as often as they should be. Um, in in children's literature so yeah i've got a lot of things going on um i'm excited about all of them <laughs> and how about you judith uh what are you currently well, working on? i'm all over the place i've got lots of things going on <laughs> but in terms of children's books i have a series that i'm working on in fact i started working on it before i did antarctica adventures but it's uh, called the sleepy adventures of philomena Feynman, and uh, in, in in the Antarctica book, as well as in this book, I use real photographs. Mm -hmm. I put cartoon characters in place mm -hmm. in the photographs. And when I first thought about it, um, I'm from a very mixed multicultural family. Very, very, very mixed multicultural <laughs> family. We're Jamaicans, but my family is just people all over the place. <laughs> and so Philomena Feynman actually just came to me because I thought, oh, here's this little mixed girl with her two little pigtails, but she's actually a cartoon character. And my husband and I travel a lot, so we have all these amazing photos 
And what I decided to do was start doing these, these books where she travels in her sleep oh. and she goes into the real world. Mm -hmm. And I decided to use real photos as opposed to um, drawings or sketches because I felt like kids also have, should have an appreciation for photography. Oh. And in all my books, like they, they're always these little car these characters who give you fun facts and stuff like that. So that's kind of my passion project, which was supposed to come out this year, but um, COVID. <laughs> so um, that's traveling it, for us, right? Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Uh, do you each think of, can you all think about a favorite writer that you have and how that writer inspires you? Uh, let's start with Debbie. So, you know, I had uh, the, the, the Click Clack Moo um, series had really inspired me. I love just the sounds of it. Um, and I, and I used it with some leadership training in, in the other business that I do. Um, but I think most recently, um, Anika Denise, um, who wrote planting seeds, um, I have found very inspiring one, just, she is very warm and welcoming and we've connected on social media. And I, as a new author, I am fascinated by that community, how welcoming it is. Um, and the, as well as I'm just a, another proud Puerto Rican woman, so I'm really inspired by what Anika has done. Um, and that really inspires me uh, to move forward in, in, with my books. Great, that's fabulous. Uh, how about you, Judith? Well, I'm, I write novels as well. I write quite in quite a few genres. So I have a lot of, a few Caribbean novelists who really inspire me. Mm -hmm. But in terms of children, I'm a Lewis Carroll fan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for as long as I can remember, Jabberwocky has always been one of my favorite points. Not to mention, you know, all the, po all the poetry from Alice in Wonderland and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the walrus and the, and the seal <laughs> and everything. You name it, I'm, I'm in if it's Lewis Carroll. And so that's been a really big influence for me, I have to say. And when I write, I think, even though, I, even though my genre is a little different, I do think Lewis Carroll, how, how can I make this fun, but interesting, <laughs> and um, all of that all at the same time. So yeah, I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Kaylin? Um, I would say probably Probably Jacqueline Woodson, she, you know, um, her work is just, um, oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's had such an impact on me as a writer and just as a person, um, but also um, Jason Reynolds, um, Angie Thomas, these are people that I just, their work is phenomenal, I look up to them, they're, they're, they're so inspiring and their stories are um, really just uh just phenomenal so yeah there's there's so many there's so many people that i could name but those are those are like my top three thank you um ladies as we close the conversation is there anything that you want your readers to know about your books uh judith well um as i said i write in different genres i have faith-based self-help books i have novels and i have children's books and i even have a pictorial because when I did the Antarctica book I did two books mm -hmm. but I'm also a filmmaker and quite a number of other things that that I just threw into the mix but you're a poet too right? you're pardon a poet. me you're a poet, I'm a poet too. as well yes <laughs> I'm also a poet um and a, a trainer and a bunch of other things but mm -hmm. just what I want them to know about my books is to check them out check them out they're all good <laughs> <laughs> You can find me on online. My name's pretty unique, Judith Fallon Reed. You won't find another one. So just check me out. I've got a website, jfallonreed.com, jamaicanonice.com, which has all my Antarctica stuff, including my film and all kinds of other things that I did with that. So check it out. Thank you. Kaylin? I can't hear. Um, so I, I think I would just like to let readers know that. Can you hear me? No. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, I just want to let the readers know that, um, no? Yes. Can you hear me? 
Okay. Um, I just want to let readers know that I um, that I see you and that this work is is you mm. know for you and for us and um, it's it's important. I know how important it is to have um, you know mirrors and windows and sliding glass doors mm. and everything else. Mm. So um, I want to I want to let you know that I see you and that you deserve uh, to be the hero of your own story. Mm. Oh. Thank you. And how about you, Debbie? The, uh, I get asked all the time, is Cooper real? He is real. He is and, real. Uh, he is real. I'm going to see if he makes a, you know, a guest appearance during my read aloud later, so tune in. Um, but uh, the, what I really want readers to be able to take away is being able to enjoy and being mindful of their environment. Um, and there really are, if you pay attention, there are things around us that um, we can enjoy. Thank you so much. Um, thank you all so much for sharing your experiences. Um, have a wonderful afternoon. We have just spoken to Debbie Gonzalez, Judith Fallon Reed, Kaylin Byron, and their books are available online or at your local booksellers. I'm Kathy Sikursky. Thank you for joining us. Thank Thanks, you. Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you, ladies. Even an